So you bought some Fresnels or some Fresnos or whatever the hell you say it on eBay and you're super excited to use them. Turn them on and boom, such harsh shadows. You're gonna need diffusion. Now you could get yourself a ratty old shower curtain and paste some of this uh, frost paper up there, but hey, why not let's make some DIY lighting diffusers. Pop them on the barn door. So much nicer. Or this big guy back here. So for this project, you're gonna need something to cut with, a staple gun, a speed square, wood glue, a tape measure, two to three generic beers. To waste the good stuff on manual labor. And something to build the frames out of. Now it looks like I'm using one and three eight by a quarter inch molding here and the idea is to try and keep the frame as light as possible since I'll be hanging them off microphone stands, but you can use whatever the hell you want. You'll also need some diffusion material and I don't really have any recommendations here. But I did buy some cheap polyester fabric off Amazon, some similar polyester fabric from Hobby Lobby, and some cheap sparkly cotton from Walmart. To my eyes, there doesn't seem to be too much of a difference between them all, but we'll do some tests later. I've opted to make an octagonal diffuser because round lights are arguably more natural looking than square ones. Here you can see a square catch light on the left and the octagonal one on the right. It's a subtle difference and a square eye light can make a lot of sense when you're indoors and the light is coming from a door or window, but building a square frame just isn't all that exciting now, is it? I bent my frame 52 inches at the longest diagonal. I figured anything much larger than that starts to become too difficult for one person to handle. At 52 inches, each side is going to be around 20 inches in length. There's calculators online that you can use to figure out the length of the sides for the size you want to build. Here's a good one. So once you figure out how much wood and cloth you need, then wander around Home Depot for an hour looking for things they say they have but don't, you can finally get started. You want to mark off 22.5 degree angles on your speed square and cut 8 identical sides. This would be easy peasy with the table saw, but don't be afraid to use whatever tools you have. Hell, even a miter box will work, but you'll be there all day. I recommend cutting things outside so you can experience the great outdoors while simultaneously annoying the hell out of your neighbors. You can probably just measure one of the sides, cut that, and then use that as a template. If you're really fancy, you might be able to stack a few cuts. But I prefer to work slow and savor the moment because you never know how long the moment's gonna last. Some of my best memories are from doing stupid little projects like this. And that's really the point of DIY. You do it for the experience, not to save money because what's money anyway? For most of us, it's the dead hours of our lives. Time spent doing things that maybe we didn't want to but had to do out of necessity anyway. So I say, when you can, Make things yourself, because it's much nicer to have the experience of making something than it is to trade in dead hours that you're never going to be able to get back. Now the cuts don't have to be perfect because you can kind of shuffle the pieces around to fill in the gaps and imperfections. Next step is the wood glue. It'd be hard to clamp all the individual pieces together so this is where the staple gun comes in handy. Can the glue really hold this frame together? Well, no, not really, but once we attach the diffusion material, it should be sturdy enough. Let the glue dry overnight and it should be strong enough to screw around with, but I don't really recommend it. I also glued these chunks of wood on top to give it something to hold on to. Like I said before, I'll be using microphone stands and not C stands because they're cheaper and I've got a bunch lying around my studio. But you can also just wedge the whole thing into a grip head or whatever. Basically, you want to put this thing together the same way you'd stretch a canvas. If you've never stretched a canvas, it's pretty simple. You move around opposite sides and apply equal tension. I like to use a star pattern like if you're tuning a drum or putting a tire back on. You don't want to apply too much tension. 
No matter what you do, the frame will probably buckle, but ideally we want it to buckle inwards evenly. Keep at it and eventually you'll have yourself a nice little diffuser. Another thing about building a bigger diffuser is that you can sort of vary the amount of diffusion in relation to the source light. But I also bought these smaller wooden hoops. I think they're for embroidery or something. Staple some diffusion fabric to these and voila! You've got yourself a nice, quick, dirty diffuser, albeit a bit smaller. So how do we do? Let's test and find out. Here's a 650 watt Fresnel without diffusion. It blinds my face off. Here's the Big Daddy diffuser with some newer brand fabric. They call it White Seamless Diffusion Fabric on Amazon. Here's some very similar fabric I found at Hobby Lobby. Here's a sparkly white cotton from Walmart. And here's the frost paper that came with my cheap Chinese lights. I had trouble convincing myself that the newer and Hobby Lobby fabrics weren't exactly the same thing, but the discerning eye can tell that the Hobby Lobby one is a little less dense. I also wanted to experiment a bit with moving the diffuser farther from the light, so here it is touching the barn doors at 2 feet and at 4 feet. And let's not forget that you can also use these to reflect light. Now it's not going to bounce as much light as an opaque bounce board, but it'll still give you a nice paper lantern type glow. Of course you can probably accomplish the same thing with a lampshade, but then you wouldn't be a big fancy pants cinematographer now would you? Well there you go. I think a little bit of diffusion goes a long way. And these little guys thrown up on your barn doors. A nice little subtle effect. No need to build that big guy back there, but it is nice to have that extra degree of control. Now, uh, these kind of remind me of something, or someone.